Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. This week I want to talk about being a great player. A lot of the content on this channel is aimed towards referees or dungeon masters, creating worlds, creating adventures, that kind of stuff, but, you know, players also need some advice, I think. I know I did, and probably still do. What are we going to do to become a better player? And what's interesting is, I think that, and I get this from talking to other people that I know that are mostly dungeon masters, sometimes we forget these things. So I started making this list in some ways to remind myself to be a better player because I've been joining more and more games. So here's my advice on what you can do to be a great player no matter what system you play. This is the number one. I know usually they count down to like the best thing or the most important thing. I don't, this is not particularly in an order, but if it was in an order, <laughs> I think this is one of the most important things. Ask questions. This right here is how we build emergent story. I hear lots of people talk about, well, my players don't, you know, uh, do anything or they don't know what to do. They feel confused. When I drop them in a sandbox, I have to direct them. And that's because players, if you want to know what you should or could or whatever, how you want to say do, you need to ask questions. And part of this, again, I'll throw a little, I can't help but saying something to Dungeon Masters. Part of this, Dungeon Master wise, is to not info dump. If you are running a game and you info dump, it's hard for the players to ask questions because they think you're telling them so much stuff that there's nothing else to know. If you keep it vague, then they're going to have to ask questions. There's a door. What does the door look like? Is it iron bound? Is it a wooden door? Is it stone? Does it slide open? Does it have a lock? Is there a handle? These are all questions that players can ask. Get involved. Ask questions. And if your dungeon master is new or didn't think about it, that'll be great for them because they'll think, oh, I got to fill this in. And that will help, again, improv at the table and movement. But ask questions. Ask who's in the tavern. Ask what's for sale. What kind of wine's for sale? Ask some for local rumors. Ask how tall the ceilings are in the dungeon. Is it, do I hear anything? How far does my light go? When I hold my torch, is the wind blowing a certain direction? Ask these questions. This is how you will get clues about what's going on in the world. And that's what I mean by ask questions. Ask questions about the world, what you see. Because imagine, imagine if you are like me. If I walk into a room, I can look around and see what I see. I can listen and hear what I hear. I can smell, Right. And so can your player characters in most cases, right? So if they enter a space and the dungeon master says you enter a room, it is 10 foot by 10 foot square with two exits, there's a lot more information there. You just need to ask. Because again, I think that if the dungeon master info dumps everything up front, you're not going to remember it all anyway. So ask about what, cur what you're curious about. If there's a painting on the wall and you, that, that goes, oh, that sounds interesting, ask about the painting. If there's a door, ask about the door. Ask about the things that interest you, and that will help the Dungeon Master understand what's important to you as a player, and they'll add more of that to the game. So on a similar note, get into your character. And when I say this, I don't mean voices. I don't mean background, necessarily. What I mean is, think about the actual character as a person. What would they actually be like? What is it like to wear armor like that? Where would they carry certain items? What is in this thieves tools that you bought for 25 gold pieces because you're playing a rogue? What is it that you have in there? Is there a little saw in there? Is there some acid? Is there rope or string, a bell? Some systems will tell you what's in there. Some are generic. Make a list of what should be in there. Maybe if it's something you think might be odd, you know, confirm it with the dungeon master that's okay. And when you go to do something like you're going to look for, or let's say pick a lock, explain it. I reach into my bag. I pull out the three picks that I have. I look for the one that's the right size. I put the, the iron in there. I turn it, right? Get a little bit more into your description. Again, don't take 20 minutes to do this where everybody's going to be staring at you, but add a little bit of depth to it. Don't just say, I look for a trap. Explain how you do it. I take my you know, blow her out and I puff away the dust to see if there's any cracks around the thing. I pour some water to see if the water goes anywhere. How did you look for the trap? Explain it. Get into the character in that moment. I'm not saying, because I don't do this, I'm not saying live in the character, but I'm saying when it's your turn and you step up to do something, think about what the character would do. It's not just numbers you're rolling. There's a little scene going on there. How does it play out? Get into your character. One of the things that I did early on when I came back into playing 
I was playing in a 5th edition campaign and I was a warlock. And of course, 5th edition, if you're familiar with it, kind of did away with on a lot of levels spell components because you can get a casting focus, I think it's called. And this basically covers all that or a component pouch that just has everything in it. And unless the thing costs gold and whatever, I'm not going to get into those rules. But what I ended up doing, I got a little bit bored with my spell casting. So I looked up again what the components were and I made sure I mentioned it. I pulled a tentacle from my, you know, bag and I kind of, you know, again, it's just barely more than saying I cast X spell, but it adds that flavor because I was into my character thinking about how they reached into this pouch and pulled out this mummified rat or whatever it was that they were using. That adds something. So when you're doing what I just said, also think about this. Pay attention and enjoy what everyone else is doing. When it's your turn and you're the thief and you're coming forward to check for traps or listening at the door, explain it, get into it, think about it. When it's time for the fighter to step forward and battle one-on-one, the, the leader of the orc tribe to, for dominance, get into it like you're watching a movie, like you're listening to an audio play. Don't check your phone, check your character sheet. And I know this whole thing about get ready for your turn. Yes, but part of getting ready for your turn is seeing what's going on enjoying that that player that's the fighter finally gets to whip out that two-handed sword and really show off their prowess because you've been sneaking around the dungeon all this time avoiding everybody. Get into the fact that the magic user gets to use that one spell they have a day to put to sleep 12 orcs and basically leave just three standing there, right? Get into it. Watch it. Pay attention. This will help you also know what's going on. So when it does come to your turn, you know the fighter just challenged the leader orc to one-on-one combat after the magic user slept half of the orc group. Now you don't go, I run up and stab somebody. I've been in games where players have done this. You see that and you say, yeah, my player slaps the fighter on the back and just gets ready to make sure if any of the other orcs jump in, I'll take them out. So maybe there's a mechanic for that in your game. Maybe you're holding your action. You're becoming a support role because you want to be a fan of what's going on. Because you're doing this thing, which is be a team player. If somebody has a moment to shine, if somebody has an idea, if the party wants to go a certain way, do it. Think about it. Why would five, four, or six, or how big your party is, people get together and risk their lives over and over again together if they don't agree on things, if they don't trust each other, if they're not working together? So you need to create a group or make a character, I should say, that's part of the group that will be with the group. You know, everybody talks about, oh, the loner, don't be that. Yes, that's surface level stuff. But I'm talking about in the moment. You've made your characters, everybody's going together. If most of the group wants to do something, go with it. Put your vote in there. Think about what, you know, you would want to do. Have your character in character or, or out, however you want to do it. Talk. But then once the decision's made, you're a team. Don't say, well, that wasn't my idea, so I'm not... Back it up. Back up what they do, and they'll back up what you do. You're a team. Work together. Don't feel like you have to completely change your mindset about how you operate in the world, about how things are, to play this fantasy character. Just use what you would normally do and just translate it to the world, right? Imagine for a minute that you're in this situation. What would you do? What would the person that you want to be do? Be your kind of best self through the game. Don't You don't have to be somebody different. If you are shy and quiet, you don't have to be noisy at the table. Unless you want to be. Maybe you don't want to be shy and quiet. Maybe you're shy and quiet because people don't listen to you, but if you're the leader of the group, you get to be that, right? So that you're finding something about yourself there, which I think is very cool. I firmly believe that we all fall into, no matter what we do in life, we tend to fall into a thing. If you are somebody who likes to take a leadership role, you will eventually become the leader at whatever job you do, at whatever organization you join at, in the D&D group. If you're somebody that loves to do backup or if you're somebody that likes to research, if you're somebody that likes to keep track of details, you'll do that even if it's not your job or your position at that hobby that you do or in the D&D game. You will be yourself and that's okay. Be yourself, just be yourself in the fantasy world. All right, so this last one is not bring snacks even though I know that's a common joke. Although bringing snacks is always nice if people like snacks. It is, don't just do what you think the DM wants you to do. If you're playing in a game and something, you are confronted by something. Because remember what I said at the beginning. 
When you walk into a room in a dungeon, the DM is going to describe things to you. They're describing that because those things are likely, at least on some level, important if they're doing it in a way that makes sense, which is what I recommend, and they've watched my videos. Uh, if they just info dump on you, then you're, you didn't pay attention anyway. It doesn't matter. But if you come into a room and they haven't been saying anything about the air, and then suddenly they say it's very windy, that probably has some relevance, right? So the other thing is true. If you are traveling on your way to this town to pick up something, to deliver something, to do a thing, and something happens on the way, you don't have to interact with it. And there may be a consequence. It might throw you off from doing the thing you were trying to do. But don't feel like you shouldn't do it because the DM doesn't want you to. The thing is, if it was, if it's in the world, you can interact with it. That is the beauty of these games. Do what the group, what your character, what feels awesome to do, and the story will follow you. Will it always be the best story? If you don't get to town and don't deliver the thing, that could be a problem. But again, it will still be a story and it will follow you. It won't be, oh, you know, you went the wrong way. The game's over. Sorry, go home. It's going to be, well, you went that way and that's where the game goes. Maybe you go down that path and it leads you on a completely different way. I've probably mentioned this before in my current campaign. I had bought this whole series of uh, zines. It was a big dungeon. And the players did the first part of it and then went and did their own thing. And we've been playing now for almost two years having an amazing time, building up an amazing story, and it has nothing to do with that first dungeon. So I hope this was helpful, not just to the players who are hopefully watching, but also possibly to the referees and dungeon masters that watch this and see, yeah, I would like to see these actions in my players. And maybe you can figure out ways to encourage them, have them watch the video, uh, to do it, right? <laughs> or maybe you don't think so. Maybe you're like, oh no, I don't like when my players uh, go off path. I don't like when my players... Uh, you know, start adding stuff to the thieves kits that's not written in the book. It, let me know. I would love to know in the comments below, both from players and referees, if you think this is good advice on being a good player. These are the things that I try to do that I think makes me somebody who gets invited back to games again, which is the important part, right? If everybody invites you back the next time, you must be doing something right. So even if you're doing none of this, you're doing all right. All right, that's all from me today. That feels like a closure from somebody else. Did I take that from somebody? Let me know if I took that from somebody. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you liked it. Ring the bell. If you could share this around, that would be amazing. Also, check the description. Down there, you're going to find links to my Discord server where you can join the conversation, my t-shirts that I'm selling now if you want a t-shirt, and also to my Patreon if you want to support the Patreon. In any case, I'll talk to you soon.